So, when you listen to music, do you care if the guitars are too loud or the kick drum doesn't, well, kick, or the vocals don't sit on top of the music? Well, no you don't, because most of the music you listen to will be well mixed. And that is to say someone has gone to the effort to make sure all the instruments are just at a perfect level to all the other instruments. And if they weren't, you would soon be complaining about how bad the music was. So, if you were to take a listen to this piece of music, which is one of ours called Time Will Tell. Would you say that the vocals are too low? Or in this section, the kick is too loud. Or for example, in this section, there's too much reverb. And you probably wouldn't want to listen to it for very long, and you certainly won't want to buy it. So yes, mixing is a very important part of the music production process. In this series of videos, we will be mixing one of our tracks called Hard Times. Hard time These will not be tutorials as such. There are much more experienced dudes on YouTube that can you teach you how to like mix guitars child. or balance the low end or mix drums. But we will be going through what each step in the mix process is and why we do it. So. In the olden days, the recording process was more about capturing a live performance. The musicians played in one room. In the music world, they say you're only as good as your last record. So they'll go on recording again and again until everybody agrees it's fabulous, just fab. An engineer, and yes, in those days they were in white lab coats, would try and balance all the sounds and then another sound engineer would set up and control the recording, which was onto a vinyl disc. So, no opportunity for retakes, overdubbing, or fixing it in the mix. And then, one day, someone who you will mostly associate with guitars, a certain Mr. Les Paul, came up with the idea of adding an extra recording head onto a tape machine given to him by Bing Crosby. What was the first thing you recorded in multi-track? What is the first thing I did? Mm -hmm. Well, the first was on sound, on sound, and the last was on sound, on sound. Sound, on sound was 1949 when Bing Crosby brought over a machine, and he said to me, come in the backyard, I was in Hollywood, and he says, hey, I got something in the car for you, Les. Help me bring it in. So I walked out to the front yard with him, and, and he opened it up, and here's this big box, and it was an Ampex. And so I took the Ampex, and I put it in my backyard, and I set it up on some stools, and I was busy making a multiple, uh, like Lover, the beginning, the very beginning. He called it Sound on Sound, and was further developed with Ampex, into an eight-channel tape machine. The multi-track was born. Later, two-inch 24-track tape machines were developed, and further still, the ability to synchronize two 24-track machines together, giving, in theory, 48 tracks of recording, although two tracks were taken up with the synchronization code. This opened up the possibility of recording several instruments onto different tracks, and then at a later time, balancing them, adding effects, and in essence, mixing them. It also meant that further processes like equalization or compression could be applied to either individual tracks or groups of tracks. Also, you could divert some of the sound to a reverb chamber and record the echo of that chamber. In Abbey Road Studios, for example, they actually have big tiled rooms with a speaker at one end and a microphone at the other. 
You can use the echo chamber straight up as you were in its pure form. So a speaker, a couple of mics or one microphone. Another example is the power station studios in New York, where they use a particular reverb sound of their rear staircase. All of these instruments, processors and effects were now needed to be mixed together to make the end product of a song. And in order to do that, you needed one of these, a mixing desk. Also, in order to improve, alter, shape the sound, engineers started to use equipment originally designed for radio and television, but later evolved into studio outboard gear. These are like the previously mentioned EQ and compression, as well as effects units, gates, delays and reverbs. By blending and adjusting all of the above, as well as riding the faders, in essence adjusting each track's volume, these sounds, tracks, would be all summed together into just two channels, which was then recorded onto another two-track tape machine. Stereo was born. Some instruments were sent to the left channel, some to the right, and some to both. The Beatles were one of the first bands to experiment with early stereo, and it's worth checking out some of their older music, where, for example, all the guitars were in the left speaker and all the drums were in the right speaker. Techniques have become a bit more refined these days. Jump ahead several decades, and the digital revolution means that today we can record and mix entirely in the computer, a.k.a. in the box. That is to say, the multi-track tape has been replaced by hard disk drives with a capacity of recording up to, say, 256 tracks, depending on your hardware. The mixing desk has been replaced by a DAW, or a digital audio workstation, and the analog EQ and compressors and reverb rooms have all been replaced by plugins, digital emulations of the original equipment. And then the final song can be mixed, mastered, and digitally uploaded onto streaming platforms like Spotify, all as ones and zeros, as opposed to the physical printing of vinyl records. As previously mentioned, this series of videos is going to look at mixing one of our tracks, Hard Times. And in the next episode, we're going to look at how we set up our mixing template, including auxiliary tracks, effects tracks, stems, and a process of analog emulation, all within Pro Tools. Future episodes will then look at how we add effects, balance sounds using EQ and compression, track automation, and then the final mixing process. So if you found this introduction to mixing interesting, please hit the like button. It really does help our channel out. And remember to subscribe to get notified of future videos.